<sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about hair. Now, before I even go into my story over the last six months, let's kill the music that's playing in the background. I deliberately put it there and that's to address the first thing I wanted to say before I even get into today's video. Not everybody who keeps their hair in locks is Rasta. Stop calling people with locks Rasta. Nobody has told you their religion because of the hair they wear. Stop calling people Rasta. The next thing that I want to address before I get into the things that I've learned over the last six months of trying to, no, not trying to, I am locking my hair, is that, well, people don't put enhancers in their hairs before they lock it. It's not even advice. You leave your hair natural before you decide to lock it. Now, for those people who had seen my before, I grew my hair out and I decided to lock and are extremely surprised by how I don't even think it has grown that quickly because I, wanted to, I, I would want it to grow quicker than this. And I'm extremely surprised by the fact that in the last six months, it's growing so fast. I don't use enhancers. I can't even use enhancers in my hair. I don't put oils in my hair and I didn't do that before I started to lock. So that is not something I did. If you are losing hair, if your hairline is receding, the thing I remember doing after realizing that my hairline was receding, first of all, I wasn't balding. Balding starts at the top of your hair and eases out. My hairline was receding because I think I was cutting my hair too often. Once every week at most or 10 days, that was what I was doing. And it thins out your front edges quicker as far as I know. So when I decided to grow my hair out, and just leave it because I was tired of this hairline receding. All I was doing was putting raw shea butter in my hair. Now, the first lesson that I learned very quickly when I decided to lock my hair was I should have grown it out a bit longer before I started because five months wasn't enough. It was actually really short. And I think that based on my research or even asking friends before I went to lock it, a lot of them who have done their hair in locks were telling me that I would have to grow it out a little bit more, but I was rather stubborn because they were telling me some of the salons would literally walk you out and say, no, it's not ready for locks. So maybe I should have braided it. Maybe I should have done something. Maybe I should have waited, but I wasn't patient. Thankfully, my lotician or yeah, my lotician decided to do it for me. So big shots going out to Zubi. So what I would do if I would lock my hair again, I'll definitely grow it out way, way longer before I decide to lock. That is my first lesson because I have friends who have locked their hair and because they grew out their afro or the natural hair for longer, yeah, I'm jealous. It looks way longer and nicer and I think it will lock way faster. Another thing that I learned was that it takes a very long time for your hair to properly lock and it depends on your hair type as well. Apparently, I have the kind of hair type that takes longer because it's soft and is it rubbery? The texture is different than most. So it's not very kinky in that sense. So it will take way longer and I have to wait it out. So I'm waiting out the locking while I am also waiting out the growth in terms of length. Another thing that I have come to learn. Now, when I began the journey, because my hair was too short, they had to do twists first. And even that, I was elated. But when I got home and I realized that the twist could not be interlocked, I was extremely fussy. Yes, because I thought that by the time I sleep and wake up the next day, I would have lost everything. So yeah, it was a really, really difficult two weeks to a month before my next session at the salon. But you come to realize that, well, it's not much that's going to happen to the hair because of the way they twist it. It tends to stick around for a long time. So be patient or just relax. The patience is a lot of your hair journey that you come to realize. You have to be really, really patient. And the patience comes from, you know, growing out your hair, getting it twisted, taking care of it, 
and even waiting for it to fully mature is one thing that you need to know. Another thing that I've um, learned or I've experienced is the itch starts very strong when you begin, but then things start to become normal. You don't even realize that you have the hair on top of your head that much, even though you unconsciously play with it a lot. I find myself just touching my hair like very often, but you don't feel the hair until you see it and you don't feel the itch. My itch only comes when I have to wear a drag to sleep. I hate the drag. I don't know if anybody else watching with locks hates the drag or the scarf or whatever it is. I hate it. But you have to wear it to protect your hair when you sleep because for the few hours that you'll be tossing and turning or whatever it is, yeah, it doesn't do your hair really nice when you wake up. For a whole month, I wasn't doing it. And I was complaining about the fact that my growth was going up and I want my growth to come down because I like the look of when it's long and down. So the only option that my lotician gave me or hairdresser gave me was to wear my durag. So I was trying to escape the durag. It didn't work. I'm back to wearing it every night before I sleep. I hate it when I wake up because when you take it off, it looks literally like you wore a bowl over the top of your head and it's flat and you have to, you know, frizzle it out again. But yeah, that's some of the things I've learned so far with my locks. It's been six months and my next appointment is also in, is it a month or a couple of weeks? No, three weeks. Yeah. And for my journey, it has grown from appointment from two weeks to four weeks to six weeks. And now my longest I have to endure is eight weeks. But I've become so used to the hair that I'm okay with the way it looks when it even looks like the undergrowth is a lot. I'm okay with it. I'm fine with how it looks now because now I've come to settle on the idea of the whole process of how the lock or the locks happen. And I'm happy with my hair. Another thing that I get asked a lot is, so what is the end goal? I was like, what, what do you mean what's the end goal? What are you going to do with the hair? Um, what do you do with hair? It's a hairstyle. I decided to choose this hairstyle because I wanted to choose this hairstyle. So I am growing my hair and it's, what it is, as long as I want or as short as I want it, I'm waiting to see it fully mature. And oh, I can't wait. I can't wait till I'm able to bathe this hair anytime, not anytime, but safely as I want. Because at the moment, because of my hair uh, type and yeah, my hair type and the process, I'm having to endure no bathing of the hair just keeping it dry as much as possible because it helps with locking it quickly. So six months later, this is how my hair looks like. Um, this is a long strand. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. And uh, I love my looks. I really do. So maybe my next video will be in the next three months and then a year. Well, three months after that. And we'll see where it goes from there. So if there are any experts who have any pointers, you can share in the comment section below. I'm still learning. And I'd love to hear from anybody who has different opinions about how to care for my locks and get the most out of this look that I've started. So I'll catch you again in the next video. I don't know when about my hair. I mean, in the next three months, like I said. So it will be nine months old, I guess. And yeah, peace out. Kwame, yeah, I almost said Kwame Rasta. See, si. see, si. nah, done.